<clears throat> Raise your hand if you like fractions. No? All right, got two people that like fractions. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make life easy on us. Let's eliminate our fractions. We've spent a whole focus lesson getting rid of fractions. So let's go back and remember how we get rid of a fraction. For instance, here is a fraction. We can eliminate this fraction by just dividing the 3 into the 6, right? However, sometimes we can't divide the denominator into the numerator. For instance, x plus 4 does not evenly divide into 4x, correct? However, let's create a number that it can divide into, which we call our common, um, least common denominator, least common multiple. So what we want to do is we want to find a number, which we'll call our LCD, that x plus 4, x minus 1, and x squared plus 3x minus 4 all divide into. But hold on, I just saw a trinomial. Should I just try to factor this real quick just to make sure? Yeah, because I never know. I might have to use this. So this factored is, let's see, x plus 4 times x minus 1. Wow, oh, man, Mr. McGlone, we've been doing a lot of factoring today. All right, now, I need to find something that all three of these, all three of these divide into. So let's think about this. Numbers is easy. That's easy. What does x plus 4 divide into? Does anything ring into your head? The easiest thing for me is, does everything divide into itself? Yes. So why don't we just say x plus 4? That's, I'm just doing it in red. Does x plus 4 divide into x plus 4? Of course it does. That's the division property, right? That goes to 1. So what should we write for x minus 1? x minus 1. All right. And then, if you notice, we don't have to add these because they're redundant, right? They're duplicates. So now, what we want to do is we take our LCD and we multiply every single term times our LCD. Every single term times our LCD. Okay. So now what happens is, does x plus 4 divide into this x plus 4? Does x minus 1 divide into that x minus 1? Does x plus 4? Yes, yes. So now we're left with this equation, 4x times x minus 1 plus 3 times x plus 4 equals 15. Is this much easier? Does this look much easier to solve than before? Yes? OK. So now I have to apply distributive property. 4x squared minus 4x plus 3x um, plus 12 equals 15. Um, I do know this is a quadratic, though. And all quadratics, we, need, um, we can't isolate the x. We need to set them equal to 0. So therefore, I need to get the 15 to this side. I get 4x squared minus x uh, minus 3 equals 0. So now, I need to solve this. Again, this is a quadratic. We should look to factoring first. Or if factoring doesn't work, you could always do quadratic formula, right? But again, this is going to produce two binomials. So there's only two options, guys. It's either 2x times 2x or 4x times x. And our last two numbers need to give us 3. So it's only 3 and 1. But one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative because they're going to multiply to give me a negative 3. right? Because 1 times 3 is 3, and negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So one of those has to be negative. So you, know, you can do this in your head. You could obviously do the AC method. You could do negative 12 and negative 1 and do it that way. Um, but I'm going to see if I can come up with this. If I did 3 times that, that would be 6. No, that's, this is not going to work. Because think about it. If I did like minus 3 and plus 1, this gives me 2x, and that gives me negative 6x. That's not, adding those together is not going to give me a difference of x. However, I got it. However, what if I did, I'll do the wrong one first plus 1 and minus 3. What if I did this? Well, does 4x times x give you 4x squared? 
Does negative 3 times 1 give you negative 3? Does negative 3x, or negative 3 times x gives you negative 3x, and 4x times 4 gives you 4x? Do these, when you combine them, have a difference of x? Yes, but they have a difference of, we need a difference of negative x. These have a difference of positive x. So all I'd have to do is just change the signs. Okay? Now, I use my zero product property, and I set them both equal to zero. Actually, we're not going to have time for you guys to do it, but that's okay, because this problem gives me exactly what I want. So now, x equals 1, and x equals negative 3 fourths. But we're not done. I didn't go over this on the focus lessons, because we only had like 20 minutes, and we were short on time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to make sure we check our answers. Because if you remember rational expressions, rational expressions have asymptotes, right? Meaning there's values that are at asymptotes. So what we need to do is take our values and plug them back in for x. Now, if I plug negative 3 fourths in for x, am I going to get 0? No, what number gives me 0 here? Negative 4. That's not negative 4. If I plug in negative 3 fourths in here, do I get 0? No, only 1's going to make me get 0, right? And then that's going to be the case. So this answer works. But what about if you plug in 1? If I plug in 1 right here, I get 1 minus 1, which is 0. Can you divide 3 divided by 0? No, right? So this is what we call an extraneous solution. You can just abbreviate it with EXT. But you will need to know where 